ledger that her, I have to use the term owner because even though I hate to because as I point out in here, no one owns somebody else. But that's how they were thought of then and that's how they thought of themselves and that's how the enslaved people regarded them. But her, but her owner was a minor. His stepfather kept a ledger um, of expenses that he accrued in, in taking care of the enslaved people who belonged to his stepson. Among the uh, lists of expenses was um, a charge by a midwife who gave aid in the birth of a child to uh, a woman named Rit. Harriet Tubman's mother's name was uh, Harriet, and she was called Rit, or Ridia. And the child that was born to Rit at that time was Harriet. And there's just no, if you know, I can't go into the how, how we know who, which child was born in which order. But because he kept that ledger, you can look at that date and see when, at least when the midwife was paid. Now, maybe she came a week before that, maybe two weeks before that. But in that season, in 1822, um, in that county was born the child called Araminta Ross, who became Harriet Tubman. And so I'm going to stop there. And um, I, I did want to point out one thing here. I don't know if any of you all, uh, and this is about the writing of history. Uh, if you all noted the uh, piece in The New Yorker, not this week, but last by Jill Lepore. And it's, uh, it has to do with the recent um, so-called memoirs that were made up. Uh, that's why she wrote it, but it's not specifically about that. It's about the difference between history and fiction and the, the history of history and the history of the writing of fiction and how uh, until the uh, 19th century, people didn't think that uh, a list of facts was history. Now, I, I got flack from historians about this book and biographers saying, what, she doesn't know that. Why is she using your, her imagination? Which, I mean, I don't get it. Uh, I don't know how you write history. We write it from where we are now, from what we know now. I write it as me. If you wrote this book, you would write a different book. There's something like 19 biographies of Benjamin Franklin. Now, those aren't just a litany of, you. He was born, he lived, you know, he flew the kite, he died. <laughs> they each have a point of view. Um, but this is what, the, these are mostly quotes from uh, otherwise, but she, here's, here are a couple of the quotes. Um, this is from the English writer William Godwin um, in an essay called Of History and Romance, which he wrote in 1797. There is not and never can be any such thing as true history, Godwin insisted. Nothing is more uncertain, more contradictory, more unsatisfactory than the evidence of facts. Every history is incomplete, this is Jill Lepore. Every historian has a point of view. Every historian relies on what is unreliable, documents written by people who are not under oath and cannot be cross-examined. That is to say, even the best historian has a good deal in common with Jane Austen's book um, called Partial Prejudiced and Ignorant Historian. Before his imperfect source, sources, the historian is powerless, and this is Jane Austen. He must take what they choose to tell, the broken fragments and the scattered ruins of evidence. He could decide merely to reproduce his sources to offer a list of facts, but this is in reality no history. He that knows only on what day the Bastille was taken and on what spot Louis XVI perished knows nothing. <laughs> and this is from Jill Lepore. Um, history concerns facts, but because they have to be arranged and explained, the historian is a dealer not in certainties, but probabilities, and is therefore a romancer.
So you can, you know, you can chew on that a little bit and see what you think about it.